How's it going everybody? Mr. Ideas here. Today, we're going to do something a little extreme. Times are tough. A recession is coming. So today we're going to be donating over $100,000 to small YouTubers and streamers. Don't forget this video is sponsored by my Patreon and merch. Mer so buy my merch, y'all. <laughs> buy my merch. 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 Mr. Beast. The social media Robin Hood, the vlog in Pancho Villa, Mr. Beast has made a name for himself as a wealthy philanthropist who gives to the needy. As of this video, he has over 24 million subscribers, all thanks to his viral acts of charity. Outside of a few oopsie gamer moments, he's well respected and loved. You would have to be one hell of a cynic to hate on a guy who gives to charity. Well, dear viewer, I wouldn't let the fancy marketing convince you. Strip away the glossy paint, and underneath you have something seriously horrifying. Jimmy Donaldson was born on May 7th, 1998. He was raised by his mother and by all accounts, they lived a solidly middle class life. Donaldson became interested in content creation from a very young age. Starting at only 12 years old, he started off with gaming content. It wasn't until 2016 where he started to see some success, with what can only be described as viral stunt videos. Microwaving a microwave, counting to 100,000, buying a $1,000 keyboard. Donaldson recognized the importance of spectacle very early on in his YouTube career. They're catchy videos with not a lot of substance, but you just can't help but click on them. His snowball towards fame would begin on June 15th, 2017, when he released giving a random homeless man $10,000. He was sponsored by the media company Quid, who gave him 10k, and he turned that 10k into viral success. Soon after, his channel would follow the same viral stunt formula mixed with what Wikipedia calls viral acts of charity, and he dropped out of college to pursue content creation full time. And watching these videos, frankly, there's a lot to like here. Mr. Beast isn't a scumbag. He's respectful of the boundaries of the people he gives to. He's actually pretty sweet. He's transparent about the sponsors and the whole process that makes his videos possible. I mean, there's not a lot to hate on here. The more I watched, the more I started getting sucked in into the Mr. Beast ecosystem. And I'll be damned if I didn't want to buy some Mr. Beast merch after I watched him give $100,000 to a food pantry. How am I going to cancel this guy when he's so gosh darn likable? But I saw something that pulled me out of the spectacle almost immediately. On one of his videos, Gabby Hanistan asked, I want to know how it's humanly possible to have so much money. And Pastel Normie responds, He has amazing supporters that buy his merch so he gets most money from that. There's a lot to unpack here. Yeah, 100k is a lot of money for you and me, but these are investments. A video with 42 million views generates enough revenue to make sure both Beast and his sponsors are paid handsomely. But what got me the most was how thoroughly this guy bought into Mr. Beast's narrative about his merch. See, in every Beast video, he makes sure to remind the viewer that his acts of philanthropy would not be possible without your support. He makes the connection pretty explicitly with his 10k give back promo. His supporters are investors. By investing into Beast branded gear, you make his acts of kindness possible. But that's a lie. The Beastie Boys are profiting immensely from charity. Buying merch means you're lining the pockets of Mr. Beast and helping him build his business empire. There's a reason people don't donate to charities with large overhead costs. And while Mr. Beast doesn't pretend to be anything but a business, his brand is so closely tied to his acts of philanthropy and his messaging is so heavy handed to an audience of mostly young people that it's pretty unethical or at least really, really scummy. Fans like this guy falsely believe this about Mr. Beast because Mr. Beast needs them to, to sell his merch. And it's all a part of the spectacle. Now, I've been using the word spectacle to describe the content of his channel throughout this video. It's actually a really technical term in critical theory that I can't even begin to describe this word vomit of a definition, but I can give you my most bare bones interpretation. The spectacle is the glitz and glamour, 
all the shiny content, the mass media, the news, the entertainment that has us all ooing and aahing without ever thinking critically about the world around us. The late Paul K. Longmore, the author of Telethons, described 20th century telethons as uniquely American. Television changed the landscape of American homes dramatically, and as a growing skepticism and cynicism against corporations took over popular culture, mega companies found telethons were easy publicity. Actors and celebrities often participated, and the amount of money corporate donors made off of these supposed charities is staggering. Philanthropy became a multi-million dollar industry, and it shored up the failures of the existing healthcare system that left so many disabled people without care. Instead of the state providing care to the needy, like in most other industrialized nations, the United States relied on private charity and philanthropy. And this made it so that the telethon became almost institutionalized, a staple of American life. These charities were the pillars that upheld the deeply broken healthcare system in the United States. Neither could exist without the other. And while disabled people were the supposed victors of the telethon's success, the real winners were the telethon hosts and the corporate megadonors. Disability activists called telethons dignity thieves and held large protests, calling for telethon series like that of Jerry Lewis to be shut down. All the spectacle and buzz surrounding the telethon really covered up the fact that the system beneath was deeply, deeply broken. Clearly, a small-time philanthropist like Beast is nowhere near this level of institutionalization. And, I mean, in most of his videos, he doesn't even pretend to be giving to the needy, he just gives to family and friends. So, a better comparison would be someone like Oprah or Ellen, you know, talk show hosts. They lavish their guests with expensive gifts, and Mr. Beast is a lot like that. Mr. Beast is YouTube's Oprah. And you might be like, well, what's the problem? I love Oprah! But like the telethon, the charitable part is largely a vehicle for profit and fame. So donating small bits of money here and there is really just a line item in these companies' marketing budgets. There's a reason why you get a car and you get a car is a meme. Oprah's marketing department knows how to go viral. It's all a part of the spectacle, and it's profitable. But you know what isn't profitable? Ending world hunger, or ending homelessness, or ending any form of exploitation. I mean, that shit's expensive. And it stops being showbiz, and it starts being... C-SPAN. On the other hand, the business of applying band-aids onto deep structural issues pays really, really well. Seriously though, if you believe the hype about philanthropists, ask yourself how they can be increasing their money year by year despite them giving it away, you know, supposedly. If they were such good people, shouldn't their wealth be decreasing, not increasing? It's almost like maintaining the status quo is a feature, not a bug of charitable giving. And look, come on, let's be real, y'all. Everyone is fucking charitable. Think what politician or overall sleazebag hasn't had a photo shoot giving toys to kids on Christmas that don't have parents or whatever. Look hard enough and I'm sure you'll find a picture of Bin Laden in a soup kitchen. That's the bare minimum standard of goodness. Now until these philanthropists can prioritize helping others over their bottom line and their profits, then nothing's going to change. And their acts of kindness just uphold the status quo. Hear me out, dear viewer. This is all our fault. Borrowing from the philosopher Slavoj Žižek here, when you buy a coffee at Starbucks, you don't just buy a coffee you buy a whole coffee ethic. You purchase into responsible business practices that promise fair trade coffee, with high wages for farmers and reinvestment into the communities involved. You wouldn't buy not ethically sourced coffee, would you? What are you, a horrible person? And the rub here is that Mr. Beast is a lot like that localized to YouTube. Viewers can enjoy Beast just like they enjoy Logan Paul or Shane Dawson, except Beast also provides the viewer the benefit of being part of an ethical ecosystem, an ethical brand. So that while yes, you consume, you're also helping others. In the mere act of consumption, you do something to redeem yourself as consumer. But that's a farce. It's a lie. You don't help people by helping Mr. Beast. That's like saying going to McDonald's is helping the children just because you donated your spare change at the cash register. It's ridiculous. 
If you want to help Mr. Beast, then help Mr. Beast. He's a fun content creator, he makes good content, and shit, we gotta get paid for the stuff we do out here on YouTube, and YouTube sure as hell ain't paying us, so go ahead. But if you want to help people, we need to start thinking about the systems of domination that keep people poor and suffering. Ethical consumerism and charity for business will never be able to do anything about that because protecting the bottom line will always come first. And remember, when you donate to charity through the cash register, the company gets to write it off as a tax deduction, much like our friend Mr. Beast. So who's getting help the most here? The people in need or the companies and the brands? Think about it, y'all. Peace. Hi y'all, thank you all so so much for watching. You might not have been able to tell throughout the video, but I'm a little sick. So the video took a little bit of time to put out. Hope y'all don't mind. Super special shout out to my canine commanders and above. Lucy, Haciel A, Breadbeard, Oliver, and Danny B. I couldn't have done it without any of you or any of the rest of my Patreons. You all make this possible. Thank you so so much. Did it die?